So now let's look at LibreOffice. So here's LibreOffice. It looks pretty similar. It's a little bit cleaner. It has the, the drawing options here, so you can insert your flowchart things, symbol shapes, callouts, all kinds of things. You can insert text boxes just like you can in Word. So LibreOffice also has a mail merge option, and so I want to go ahead and look at that. So you click on that and you see this is more of a traditional uh, wizard that you may or may not be familiar with. We're going to create a new document. Click on next. And you can see that it's created this new document in the background and taking you to this mail merge wizard page. We're going to do a letter because that's that's the closest to what we did in Word. Basically the difference is an email message, it's sort of if you want to make a mass mail email, whereas a letter you kind of need an address and such. So we'll click letter and go next. And now we have an address list that I made, it's got one name on it. And so we're going to say it should contain an address block and you see this is kind of similar to how it worked in Word where these are the mail merge fields is basically going to look for these uh, angle brackets and then whatever keywords are in between them. So if we click on more, bring this up so you can see it, see these are the way the pre-formatted address blocks look like. So we can actually create a new one and bring that up and this is more similar to what was offered in Word. You can drop in the different fields, so you can drop in title, first name, last name, and any changes you put in between here will be sort of reflected in the mail merge. Now unfortunately, this doesn't give you a lot of customization. As you can see, like really it just lets you switch the order. It's, it's maybe not the best. Um, this is one area where Word kind of really outshines LibreOffice because it, it really lets you customize things a little bit more. So in that respect, it's a little bit nicer because you can see it's sort of mushing together the first and last name. It's it's not the best. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And so after we click OK, we can see that the one we created is here at the bottom. So we're just going to go OK one more time. And then we can see this is how it formats it. So once we've selected the our customized merge settings. We can go ahead and click next and here we can create a salutation. So this is based off of if you had a gender field it'll swap it between Mr. and Mrs. Um, I'm not real crazy about this because this doesn't give you enough granular control. Like I said the mail merge offering in LibreOffice is not the best. We'll click on next and here you can align it and I'm just going to click through the rest of this so we can end up seeing how it, it works in the end. So I'm actually going to go to save merged document and then if I just move this window out of the way and close it you can see this is what it's done. So this with one entry it's not that impressive but with a whole bunch you can see it's kind of the same usefulness as the one in Word. Again Word had the better mail merge option. That's where one area where Word really shines. Let me close that without saving. And so just to take an, a closer look at, so in LibreOffice if you want to insert a table you have two options. You can either click this downward arrow and get the same sort of thing that we saw we click this and get the downward arrow and kind of get the same idea that we do in Word and Google Docs. Or you can click this button and get a more numerical way of doing it. So it kind of plays to both strengths. I believe Word will let you do something similar if you go to insert table then you can actually pick the numbers and do it that way. In Google Docs it will only let you do it with the visual representation. And LibreOffice also has a table of contents feature. This is called something a little different though. Um, in LibreOffice instead of table of contents you go to insert indexes and table and then you can go indexes and tables and here it lets you define the title sort of how it's used and you can protect against manual changes. You can do all kinds of things with it. And this gives you a lot of configuration options as far as how you want your table of contents to be configured. Um, it lets you sort of define at each level what will appear. So if you have multiple headings, then it'll show you kind of how those work. One other thing that's really nice, if you go to Format, Bullets, and Numbering, not only do you have a whole bunch of different bullet styles you can pick from, and number styles you can pick from, and outlining styles, graphical styles, you can pick how they're laid out, all kinds of things you can customize. Under options, this is very nice. This is one of my favorite things. You can actually define what will show up before and after each 
each entry in a numbered list. This is very nice. If you have to write something really long, like a research document, like a thesis or a dissertation, and you want to title your chapters or your sections with something specific, this is really, really nice, because then you do this, and then it shows up in your table of contents or your index, as, as it's called in this. And uh, I think that's really nice. Word lets you do this, too. If you go to Format, Bullets and Numbering, you see it has these different bullet styles, different numbered list styles, and outline styles. If you click on these and on the outline numbered and click customize, here you can change what it says on each individual level and you can sort of put in, okay, I want this to say section and then in this area I want it to be chapter and you can pick, you know, where the numbering starts, all kinds of, of different things like that. And here you pick the numbering style and you know you could be as creative as you'd like it's really really handy this is something that um, Google Docs doesn't really touch at all and sadly pages offered by um, Apple doesn't really do it either this uh, is very very useful this I use this a lot when I was writing my thesis unfortunately I wrote my thesis in pages so whenever I would need one of these I would use my wife's computer to make a list and then import it to my Mac it it was not fun so with that let's take a look at pages because really the rest of this is all very similar I mean you have things to increase indent turn on lists uh, numbered lists um, align or justify your text um, you can for the format paintbrush is kind of interesting you use that to basically apply swaths of style changes but these are all sort of things that basically modify the workflow of applying things that we've already looked at so this is pages uh, you'll note right off the bat that it's a little weird in that it doesn't center the text editing area and when you zoom in it does the same thing where it increases the area it covers but that's a little odd um, one of the big features of pages is this this is the inspector window and this sort of uh, collects all of the options and things when you're gonna lay out a document so if you want to modify a table insert a chart um, insert links or multimedia stuff uh, objects things like that that would come from here so let's insert some text so you can kind of see what that looks like and of course I'm zoomed in kind of a lot and you can do things like you can insert um, a text box and you know you can move that around this gives you some options here to change whether it's uh, inline it's floating so what what these just basically mean when it's floating you can position it wherever you want inline means it treats it like a piece of text in the background it means just that it's sort of here in the background it's really hard to see and this sort of you can pick how the text wraps around it so that's just how text boxes work you can of course insert a table of contents one thing that kind of stinks with this one uh, you can only ever have one table of content that's not really great and like all of them you have to update it manually and here you pick which heading style you want in your table of contents you know it's functional it's uh, just as functional as word and LibreOffice and Google Docs but it doesn't have as many features uh, you you're kind of locked into the predetermined types of numbering and bulleted lists you can't define your own styles like I mentioned earlier um, I liked it a lot for its layout ability like um, basically I have used this to make some questionnaires and things and it, it works really well for laying out text in it kind of a pretty way it's sort of a little bit like um, Adobe offers some software to can to create text documents and make like flyers and things it sort of offers functionality like that that is not as readily accessible in Word and uh, LibreOffice so that's kind of nice um, but otherwise for for text editing it's missing some features that I really like and actually one thing I'm not going to go into there's a service called Zotero that allows you to manage bibliography like if you're citing documents and things that um, I might talk about it later uh, there's theoretically there's a Zotero plugin for LibreOffice but it doesn't quite work on my Mac but Zotero really works well in Word and actually that's why I bought a copy of Word because I'm working on my dissertation and well it's gonna make my life a lot easier so that's sort of an overview of these four word processing suites um, they're all pretty fully featured honestly LibreOffice and Word offer the most features um, pages is pretty nice 
I used it for years because somebody bought it for me for Christmas once and I was you know, too cheap or didn't have the money to buy anything else. LibreOffice is relatively new. If I had known about that earlier, I probably would have used it. If you need word processing software and you don't want to buy anything, I would recommend using this. It's very powerful and a lot of the techniques that we've talked about in this class will apply and the learning curve is pretty, sh pretty shallow. Like I think you'd be able to pick everything up really fast. Obviously, if you have Word, it's sort of the standard, and so it's not a bad idea to use it. 